have some unusual praise. Glory to the most high God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome. Welcome to today, Hammer Point. Glory be to the most high God. Welcome to today, Hammer Point Life. I'm Anastasia Fishna, and the Lord has been so faithful in our lives. Um, the Lord has been so wonderful in our dealings, and we have every reason to praise the most high God. So, welcome to today, Hammer Point. And we're still in the season for a new rebirth. We're still in the season for God's visible power in our life. We're still in the season of proclaiming that Christ is indeed the rock on which we stand. Glory be to the Most High God. So welcome to Christ, the Solid Rock series. Today, I'm going to do a part three of it, which I entitled, in your pain, or rather, your pain is a sure route to your gain. Your pain is a sure route to your gain. Let me just know if you can hear me. If you can hear me, write something. Let me know if you can hear me. If I'm audible enough, let's know. Let's know what you're watching from also. Because today, the Lord wants to elevate us to another realm of his glory. The Lord wants to take us to another realm of possibilities for us to know that no matter what we're passing through, God is right there with us. And anything that we pass through or anything that we're passing through is a way of God strengthening us for the purpose that he crafted us. Beloved, your story might not be the same with anybody's story. God has made you so different. And because you're so wonderfully and uniquely made by God, therefore your pain might not be my pain. But guess what, sweetheart? Each and every one of us, we have pain. So it could be a physical pain. It could be an emotional pain. No matter the kind of pain that you have, I bring you good tidings today that God indeed is a healer. And God indeed is the one that comforts the brokenhearted. The Spirit of God uh, revealed to us in the Isaiahs how Jesus Christ was anointed to do what? To heal the brokenhearted. How Jesus was anointed to open the eyes of the blind. How Jesus was anointed to set the captive free. So captives that are in captivity, that could be their pain. And uh, people that are brokenhearted, that could be their pain. And those that are blind to their peppers, that could also be their pain. And what is the good news? The good news is that Lord has anointed Christ to do what? To set us free from these hindrances or the things that we're passing through. So welcome to Solid Rock. Uh, welcome to Solid Rock. Uh, series welcome shati welcome adenica thanks for joining and please help us to share so that other people can join too for them to be blessed also so your pain is hidden in your peppers that that could be something you're going uh, that there could be something that is going on in your life and you've been complaining why god why me beloved i bring you good news that that stuff that you that thing in particular that you're asking god why me God is training you in that process. God is uh, disciplining you in that process because of the work that he has prepared for you for the future. And I tell you, as soon as you're able to conquer the, uh, the, that challenge that you're passing through, there's going to be a glory. That's why I titled today's message, Your Pain is a Sure Route to Your Gain. Because in any situation, in anything that we're passing through, is a is a preparation for the glory that is to come glory to god so now we i want us to take our test from the book of hebrew hebrews chapter number 12 and i'm going to read verse uh, 3 talking about hebrews chapter number 12 verse 3 says for consider him talking about christ that endured such a contradiction of sinners against himself least be uh, least ye be worried 
or wearied and faint in your minds. That is to say that consider also Christ who suffered so many things, who suffered um, uh, holy even for the sinners, for the sins that he did not commit. Uh, commit. If Christ could suffer uh, solely uh, for the sins that he did not commit, uh, commit and God still saw him through, how much more are you? Uh, the, the scripture says that all have sinned and conscious to the glory of God. It means that we are all um, we are all sinners and we must have committed one sin or the other. But God is not actually looking at our sin. Rather, on this atrium, on this uh, natural atrium, that, 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 that's, that's what we call uh, laws of nature. So no matter how holy we think we are, no matter how holy we try to be, there's always a law of nature catching up with us. Amen. There's always a law of nature catching up with us. And we want to be uh, encouraged and not discouraged when the laws of nature catches up with us. And sweetheart, when the laws of nature catches up with us on this atrium, that does not mean or that, uh, that doesn't mean that God has forsaken us. That doesn't mean that God has uh, that God has uh, rejected us. But it means that there's a way out after the tunnel. Amen. It means that those sorrows may last for the night, joy will come in the morning. That's what the scripture says. So when we're passing through stuff, we should remember the scriptures and let the scriptures be a lamp on our on our path. Let it be a lamp on our path. Because if the scriptures and the word of God becomes a lamp upon our path, we can see clearly what the Lord has for us in stock for the future. We can also see clearly, uh, uh, clearly, the things that the Lord has proposed for us in our purposeful calling. So, beloved, pain is an is an instrument, or rather, a vehicle for spiritual growth. Now, have you wondered when, um, for instance, let, let me just talk about the natural being of a human being. I mean, talking about a man that is, uh, that is, uh, uh, let's say, the man that has uh, that is fat and he wants to make a uh, uh, some fitness. I mean, he wants to do some exercise uh, in order to reduce his weight. Uh, let me not say fat. A man that is overweight, for instance. So an overweight man goes to the fitness studio to to do some exercise to train himself and to to burn out the weight. And beloved, you know that as as this overweight man tries to uh, burn the fat, as he tries to train, it's always a time of struggle. It's always a time of pain. He struggles to lift those weights. He presses up. He, he presses down just to lift all the um, to lift the weight, just for him to uh, to lose uh, uh, some weight. So it's a time of uh, concentration. It's a time of uh, focusing. It's a time of pain. It's a time of sweating it out. But guess what? As he continues to to uh, to stay fit, as he continues to stay fit. Uh, in, in his fitness uh, routine, you we he discovers that uh, that those weights in him be, they begin to leave him the the, the weights begin to reduce because he 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 did not give up because he continued on the pain, amen. Because he knows that after the pain there's gonna be gain. Amen. Glory to God. That is just the law of nature for us. So God brought us here because uh, if everything becomes palatable here on this atrium, then what's the need for heaven? That's the question you should ask. If everything becomes palatable, there is no struggle, there is no trouble, and everything becomes palatable, then what is the need for heaven? And because there's also a place uh, to receive the crown, that's why we should know that no matter what we're passing through right now, they're still going to begin for us. Amen. So pain is an instrument or vehicle for spiritual growth. And as we continue um, in long suffering, in, in our long suffering for Christ, for instance, if we do not give up, there's going to be a gain at the end. Amen. Take it as a training. Take your pain as a training, not a, 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 a sorrowful end. No matter what you're passing through, take it as a training. And most especially, do not concentrate on your pain. Do not concentrate on your pain. For instance, last week I felt so much pain here on my ribs and I was like, what is this? 
uh, and I was like, okay, what do I do? I, I tried to do some exercise because I felt, okay, maybe there could be like this, uh, uh, dislocation of, of the muscles or stuff like that or the bones there then I, I tried to do some exercise I tried to take enough liquid and I told my husband pray for me amen and glory be to God I can I can boldly say today that the pains are gone amen so Christ has already healed us the scripture says surely we are healed Surely he has borne our grief. Christ has borne our grief. He has carried our sorrows. So sometimes you might feel some pain. Christ has already carried the pain. All we need to do is to um, renew our mind to stay in the place of his healing, to renew our mind to stay in the place of his love, to renew our mind to stay in the place of his finished work of healing upon our lives. And we'll see our life becoming pure and we'll see our life becoming holy and we'll see her alive living in the righteousness that god himself has prepared for us amen so we have to endure till the end because it is not over until it's over amen so we endure to the end until our harvest of righteousness becomes a reality amen just like christ he endured to the end and at the uh, at the end of the day he received his own crown and now at the mention of his name every knee must bow that is a uh, that is a in an eternal crown that christ received and my question is what kind of eternal eternal what kind of eternal crown do you want to receive uh, on the last day? It depends on how you handle your pain here. It depends on how you handle your pain. If you can convert your pain to gain, like the saying that says, if life throws to you lemon, make lemonade out of it. Glory to God. That's what I'm talking about, actually. No matter what life uh, thrones at you, turn it as a message. When life tries to mess you up, turn it as a message. Let it become your testimony. And that's where you can become better. And that's where you can become a personality that God crafted you consigning that pain. But if you're passing through pain and you're just busy complaining, crying to God, I mean, there is nothing wrong crying to God. But after crying to God, what are you doing? What are you doing that God will use at that point to set you free? Amen. The power of healing is in your hands. The power of uh, peppers is in your hand. The power of your destiny is in your own hands. So do not allow the pain that you're passing through to stop you from the glory that is connected to it. That is to say that whenever you're passing through difficulty, do not look at the difficulty, but look at the God who can take you out of that difficulty. And if God takes you out of the difficulty, try to convert that as a testimony and let that testimony be a reality of something that you can do continuously for the glory of God's name to be seen in your life. And by so doing, that's the only way that your pain will become your gain. But when God does something, takes away your pain, and you don't do nothing about it, then it's like a wasted testimony. Beloved, do not allow your testimony uh, to be wasted. Amen. Do not allow your testimony to be wasted. Stay um, in, in the realm of converting your testimonies. When you convert your testimonies to possible realities, life would be more beautiful life will be more um compassionate and life will be more uh uh life will be more interesting and instead of you to be complaining you see yourself living up to every kind of challenges that life throws at you so focus on the lord not your problems and remember that Christ is the solid rock on which you stand. 
And if indeed Christ has overcome the world, and Christ himself told us in his word, that in the word is full of tribulations. It means the tribulations that are mapped out in the word are actually meant to um, are, are actually meant for you to be strong and courageous for you to win. So my 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 admonishment to you today is keep winning, keep winning, keep winning. And guess what? Look up uh, unto the Lord. Look up uh, unto the cup of salvation. Back from the Lord. The Lord is like a, a cup that is full of wisdom. The Lord is like a cup that is full of blessing. Never get tired of tapping from the Lord. The David said, I will look up to the Lord. I will look up to the cup of salvation where my help coming, uh, comes from. And I will tap daily from him. Are you tapping daily from the Lord? If you're tapping daily from the Lord, then your pain shouldn't be an act of complaint. Rather, your pain will be a process that you know in your heart that there's going to be a gain at the end. So that takes us to another realm of you believing. Believe that God is with you and he loves you and he will never leave you nor forsake you. If God is for you, the scripture says, who can be against you? No one, uh, pains might come, trouble might, might come. But the scriptures also say, though they come, joy must surely also come in the morning so let us not settle on the place of trouble rather let us remember there's also going to be a place of joy in the morning and i pray for you that the morning will come in your life a morning i mean the place of joy in your life in the mighty name of jesus amen and what do you need to do to achieve that focus on the lord focus on the lord amen allow christ perfect your faith as you walk towards perfect in perfection with him. I always say that we are all embodiment of human beings re, uh, right here on this planet at Rem, uh, walking out uh, uh, for perfection. We are walking out for perfection. We are walking out our perfection every day in Christ. So therefore, do not lose your faith in him because in Christ is the awful and finisher of our faith christ is the author and finisher of our faith so allow him to perfect everything that concerns you believe also in yourself amen glory to god some of us are busy running hell to scatter to different men of god asking for solutions for our problems but beloved when you were crafted in your mother's womb that man of god was not even there so the destiny that you're looking everywhere for, the destiny is in the hands of God, which is crafted also in your own hands. That is to say that you have to believe in yourself also. Believe also in yourself. I'm not saying you shouldn't believe in the man of God, of course. Believe also in yourself. Believe in your God. Believe that you can make it no matter what the road, um, no matter how tough the road is. Believe you can make it. Believe that if uh, Mr. A made it, you can also make it. Believe in yourself. There's a place of self here, a place of uh, self-control. Even the scripture says that if we confess Christ, if we confess Christ and acknowledge him and profess him with our own mouth, that is to say with your own mouth, not with your pastor's mouth, not what your pastor is saying, not what your apostle is saying, not what your prophet is saying, but with your own mouth. Thou shalt also be saved. And if you're saved, you got a crown also to act like Jesus. That was that that would bring us to the realm that uh salvation actually is a personal relationship with God, and God can still give you the power to move mountains. Believe in yourself, believe in your God, and believe also in Christ, who is the solid rock on which you stand. Do not forget that God can also train you without pain. Because some people are like, okay, fine, uh, your pain is a sure way uh, to our gain. Must we all suffer pain? No, we must not all suffer pain. God can discipline us without giving us, uh, without us feeling the pain. That could be miracle in our life. Miracle can happen. Any kind of miracle can happen in a lot. But that doesn't mean that when pain happens, that God does not exist. God is a God of miracle, and God also 
is a God that heals. So even when the devil strikes us, the God of the healing is also there to help us. So do not forget that God can also train you without pain. But all difficulties God allows in your life is for the purpose that he has crafted you. I repeat, be strong, be courageous, and face your fears. Beloved, face your fears, and God will help you. Get to the love. Get to the love in Christ. Get hold of the love in Christ. Grab the love in Christ. Move always to all, move always in love in Christ and also stay in the radar of Christ. Because if you stay in the radar of Christ, therefore you can align with God. Amen. You know, uh, Christianity is so simple lifestyle that uh, when we preach Christ, we preach the principles of God. It's like Christ being a reality of God right here on this entrance. So when we get to love Christ and follow his dealings, we align with God. So that's the fastest way of aligning with God. The fastest way of aligning with God is to believe in the love of Christ. Amen. Turn your hardship into a powerful growth. You can turn your hardship into a spiritual growth. No matter what you're passing through, turn it into a spiritual growth. Learn and ask God for the spirit of conversion. Tell God, help me to convert. Help me to convert. That is to change my difficulty into a benefiting substance. To change my difficulty into a benefiting testimony. The God that did it yesterday is still the same today and forever. Look at the life of Joseph in the Bible. He went into difficulty. He went into the pit. The brothers threw him into the pit. They brought him out. He was sold to slavery. He went to prison. But that did not derail him. He was still being focused, trying to learn the language of the Egyptian, trying to learn the traits of the Egyptian, trying to learn the law knowledge that is uh, that is embedded in the, in the rules and regulations of the Egyptians. And that's why he was able to command the Egyptians because he wasn't commanding them in, in his Israeli language because they don't understand Israeli language. He was commanding them in the knowledge that he also acquired even right there in their midst. He wasn't concerned about looking at his trouble, but he was concerned about getting out of his trouble. And God used him powerfully to even save his own family during famine. And God also used him to raise Israel to another realm. So God can also use you, you that you're listening to the sound of my voice today, receive the knowledge of the spirit of God, receive the knowledge to move mountain and receive the, 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 the supernatural power to convert your hardship to beautiful realities. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. So whether your pain is emotional, whether your pain is physical, whether your pain is spiritual, whether your pain is financial, whether your pain is financial, God is here, right here. And the scripture says that he heals the brokenhearted. Read Psalm 147. If you read to verse 3, he says, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wound. Do you have wound in your body? Do you have pains in your body? Put your hand wherever you're having pains right now. And I pray that the, the power that raised up Christ from death will also heal your wounds in the mighty name of Jesus. The power that brought revelation to mankind, the power that brought salvation to mankind will also heal your broke, your brokenness in the mighty name of Jesus. Are you emotionally uh, um, uh, uh, trauma? Uh, are you emotionally down? Are you uh, physical? Are you financially down? Receive ideas that we uh, 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 that we that we um, catapult you to another realm of financial greatness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Because those people that have money, they actually invested in something that made them uh, super millionaires. So even though you don't want to be a super millionaire, God can still make you uh, to stand strong and be financially ca capable of taking care of yourself and your family. And I know that's one of the prayers of so many people, receive strength and creativity to get to that realm of comfort financially in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Praise be to God.
Apostle Paul was talking, said, praise be to God, the father of our Jesus Christ, the father of compassion. God is a father of compassion. And guess what God did? God brought us, he comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort also others in their trouble. With the comfort that we ourselves have received from God, we can also be a blessing to others. So for just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through him. So the, the, the comfort that we um, benefit in Christ, or rather the, uh, uh, the suffering that we, uh, we get uh, from the things of, of the Lord, likewise, there's going to be an abundance blessings if we do not give up. So beloved, let us not give up. Let us stay in that place, in that realm, whereby God can help us. Now, let's go to the book of Second uh, Corinthians chapter number 1. I read this uh, 5 from King James Version. It says, for as the sufferings of Christ abound, abound in us, so our consolation also abounded by Christ. See, it says, and whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings, which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is also for your consolation and salvation. Glory be to God. Verse 7 says, And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the suffering, so shall ye be also of the consolation. So if there's a suffering, if there's a pain, beloved, I want to bring you good news today, that if there's a pain in your life, there will also be gain. There will also be a time of blessing. There will also be a time of uh, of uh, visitation so do not kill yourself in the pain do not commit suicide in the pain because god is promising again that we come after the pain don't ever give up don't you dare give up stay in the realm that god has not finished with you yet so no matter what you're passing through beloved god has not finished with you yet yet he's your father and he's ready to show his love to you he's your father and he's ready to show his uh, understanding in your life and guess what when god shows more of his understanding and revelation of his knowledge in your life your life will become a testimony no matter what you're passing through Beloved, I want you to get to that realm that God's um, that God's reason for crafting you here on this earth realm is connected to your purposeful calling of what he wants you to do. Now, if you are in that realm of trying to achieve the reason why you are created and you're passing into some, um, some stations of, of troubles, beloved, just know that you are going somewhere. Just know that you're going somewhere and the place you're going is the place of peace. The place you're going is a place of blessing and the place you're going is a place of liberty where you can shout glory to God for Christ has become your strength and the liberty that is connected in Christ will be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you all of you for joining us today and stay in the connection, stay in the consciousness that Christ is the solid rock on which you stand. Therefore, if you're standing on the solid rock on Christ, you will never be moved. You will never be shaken. Though tribulation comes, remember, Christ has overcome the world. And if Christ has overcome the world, the overcome um, the victory that is connected to Christ will likewise be your passion. So say to yourself, I am connected to Christ, the solid drop, and in his victory I stand. Therefore, no matter what I'm passing through, no matter the troubles that come my way, Christ stands forever in my life. And his victory is his victory is a sure root to my gain. And I receive the gain in Christ Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God's blessings. And thank you, all of you that have shared. And if you haven't shared, please share this message to bless someone. Because definitely in your pain, there is a gain in Christ Jesus. Amen. Blessings and bye-bye.